America's banks are now missing hundreds of billions of dollars. Welcome to what's being called the rich session, the recession of the rich and the super prime banking crisis. This week, the contagion is now spreading to European banks like UBS and Deutsche Bank. These banks are some of the world's biggest banks and far bigger than the collapses that came before. In the last global financial crisis in 2008, it was called the subprime mortgage crisis because it was the banks that preyed upon people with lower credit scores that were given loans that were not able to be paid back. Those loans were then turned into investments or securitized, labeled very safe, and then sold off. Today's super prime banking crisis is the exact opposite. Banks like Signature, Credit Suisse, Silicon Valley Bank all serve some of the wealthiest clients in the world with the highest credit ratings. And now they're in trouble. So in today's video, I wanna help explain why these two new banks, UBS and Deutsche Bank, are now potentially next on the chopping block and I wanna start the video off by showing you a clip all the way back from December 2009 of Robin Williams himself explaining the banking liquidity crisis. I talked to them about being like a group of junkies who relapsed going, listen, man, I just need some liquidity. You know what I'm saying? I just ran into some bad subprime, you know? We just had complex formulas. We just didn't factor in greed and panic, you know? I just need $805 billion by Tuesday. Yeah, no, seriously, no, I would, I would not screw you again. It's pretty crazy. I've learned my lesson. Uh, no, baby, this is not like the other time. This, oh, no, this is, no, seriously, I just, just try to throw me a bad head, baby. Just give me, help me out. Just give me a little bit. Yeah, just a taste. That's all I need is a taste. Just, I need $2.5 trillion. Me, I'll pay you back. Get me through one week. Yeah, it's like one they're going to right. print out a new $20 bill. The new Geithner $20 bill will be, you know, instead of in God we trust, it'll just say, trust me. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the Robin Williams. He will always be our genie. So let's start off with Deutsche Bank, Germany's biggest lender and one of the largest banks in the entire world with over 80,000 employees. Just for context, Silicon Valley Bank had a little over $200 billion in assets at the end of 2022. Deutsche Bank, by comparison, had seven times as much, $1.4 trillion. The stock has now lost almost a quarter of its value in just the last month alone and is now worth less than $10 a share. This bank is another bank that is just one of 30 in the entire world that has the title of G-SIB, Global Systematically Important Bank, for which the definition is a bank whose systemic risk profile is deemed to be of such importance that the bank's failure would trigger a wider financial crisis and threaten the global economy. It's yet another bank that's considered to be too big to fail. And if we've learned anything this year in 2023, if a bank is considered too big to fail, it will be rescued, backstopped, and or any other word that describes a bailout but isn't an actual bailout because don't you dare call it a bailout. And now analysts of the Deutsche Bank stock are just in shock and are wondering why Deutsche Bank, which has had 10 quarters of consecutive profit, is now the next target of a bank scare. So to help these analysts out, I found the official list of just some of the scandals and violations spanning the last few decades that might have something to do with it. Since the year 2000, for example, they've paid roughly $18.5 billion in fines spanning across 79 violations and charges, including but not limited to manipulating currency rates, money laundering for Russia and other criminals, spying on their shareholders and their critics, contributing to the 2008 subprime global financial crisis by selling toxic CDOs, and trying to bribe officials to make it go away. Think of it like this, if banking violations were like collecting Pokemon cards, then Deutsche Bank has caught them all. They've got the entire binder. But you know what they say about bank fraud? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me 79 times, it won't matter because you get bailed out anyway. Global systematically important bank. So for those reasons and everything else going on in the banking industry is why people aren't sure they can trust Deutsche Bank with their deposits in fear of a bank run. So that's Deutsche Bank, which is contributing to the bank crisis this week but there's another banking giant called UBS. Let me show you that one. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Given today's market conditions with all these banks collapsing all around us, it makes a lot of sense why investors should be a little worried when investing. But that's why I'm so excited about the sponsor of today's video, Moomoo, Moo, a global trading platform that's owned by Futu Holdings Limited that allows you to trade stocks, ETFs, options, ADR, and OTC. They're also running a limited promotion where if you sign up before March 31st, new US users can get up to 17 free stocks and new Australian users can get up to 10 free stocks. 
But don't forget that this promo only applies for those who click my link in the description below the video. What sets Mumu apart is that they care and they focus on investors to help you go from beginner to advanced by providing step-by-step -step tutorials. And if you wanna watch these, all you have to do is go to discover at the bottom of the app, click learn, and here you can learn how to do options trading. You'll also learn macroeconomics and how the Fed potentially impacts the market. And you can even watch step-by-step -step tutorials in the investing 101 section about how to potentially spot the bottom and the top of a market using technical analysis. These videos are also regularly updated so you can stay current with the market while you learn how to become a better investor. Mumu has a ton of resources to learn from that are free to use. Mumu also has a paper trading app that follows some of the hottest markets, including the US, Hong Kong, Singapore, and China Type A shares. You can test your trading strategy without risking your hard-earned savings. It's almost like a flight simulator, but for investors. And if you need some inspiration, you can follow their top performing traders from their community to learn more from their strategies. Don't forget to click the link below in the description of this video because the offer expires on March 31st. Go try the app, let me know how you like it, and now let's get back to it. UBS is another bank in the new this week. UBS happens to be the biggest bank in all of Switzerland, and it also happens to be the bank that bailed out Credit Suisse, which if you remember, was all by itself the 16th largest bank in the world, and it was also considered to be too big to fail. The bailout of Credit Suisse is estimated to cost 8.7 million Swiss citizens $13,500 each. And this has created a huge problem, not just for Swiss citizens, but for the entire country. The fusion of UBS and Credit Suisse will create a mega bank that will have $3.4 trillion in assets under management. For context, that's bigger than Citigroup, bigger than Bank of America, and bigger than JP Morgan Chase. In fact, it's twice the size of Switzerland's entire GDP. In other words, this new mega bank will have more money under management than the entire country of Switzerland will make in an entire year, but two times over. If this was a Dragon Ball Z episode, this is the one where Goten and Trunks fused and it all went wrong. In all seriousness, this is such a huge problem for Switzerland because a bank of that size would be extremely difficult for ordinary citizens to get loans on, not to mention it would pose a huge systemic global risk for everyone involved because if that bank goes under, there would be very few entities to come in and bail them out because very few banks would be bigger than them. So the question is, what is being done to stop this mess from happening and make the banks safe again. A crypto-friendly bank called Custodia, for example, proposed having $1.08 for every $1 in client deposits. But the Federal Reserve rejected their idea and instead created something called the Bank Term Funding Program, or BTFP. By now, the banking system is, quote, missing half a trillion dollars. So the question is, where did this money go? Roughly half of all the withdrawals went into larger commercial banks and the other half went into money market funds. So the money's not technically missing as much as it represents a half a trillion dollar promise that is now worth a lot less than what it used to. And that's all because banks took a bet and they were wrong. They bet our deposits into long-term treasury bonds when interest rates were extremely low. Then when the Fed started to increase its interest rates to fight inflation, the value of those bonds went way down because no one wanted to pay those higher prices for those older bonds that were yielding those lower interest rates. And now the value of all that collateral went down by half a trillion dollars. But now the banks are sitting on all these unrealized losses, meaning they haven't clicked the sell button and they're praying that you won't ask for your money back so they won't have to except they had to. And that's because people are withdrawing and banks are now having to borrow to cover what they don't have. So this new bank term funding program was just created by the Federal Reserve to fill that half a trillion dollar gap if necessary. And so far, the amount of money that banks have had to borrow is pretty mind blowing. Since the collapse of SV Bank, roughly $500 billion has already been withdrawn and the banks have had to borrow 475 billion to meet withdrawal demands. Already, roughly 186 banks are facing the same problems as SV Bank today. Now I realize all of this is super confusing, so let me show you a quick analogy. Imagine you were my best friend and you wanted to give me your money as a deposit because you thought I was your bank. So you gave me $100 and you said, Andre, give this money back in case I need it because I don't trust myself with it. So I took your money and I converted it into this, a Yu-Gi-Oh card, the beautiful Charizard, which for whatever reason shouldn't exist, but let's just say I somehow was able to magically make passive income on it by charging people money to see it. I charge people one smash of the like button. Let's say the next day you came in though and you were like, Andre, I need my $100 back. Well, in this case, I would have to sell this card. 
I would be forced to, but I might not get exactly what I paid for it, so I don't want to sell it. So instead, I would have to go to another bank, deposit this as collateral, get the cash at some predetermined interest rate, and then pay you out. And that's exactly what this new bank lending program does. It allows the bank to take their assets, convert it into cash, and to pay their depositors, except substitute the Charizard for mortgage-backed securities and treasury bonds. I don't know if I just made it easier to understand or more confusing. Either way, I wanted to show off my awesome Charizard Yu-Gi-Oh card. Either way, in my personal opinion, I think that this was just a way for the Federal Reserve to calm people down and feel safer about their deposits. Because the truth is, this new lending program wasn't necessarily needed because the banks already had a way to raise cash through something called the discount window. This is a way for banks to approach the Federal Reserve, give up their collateral to get the same loan at some predetermined interest rate to get that sweet cash and that sweet liquidity. This new bank lending program just does the exact same thing they were already doing before. Now, as a consequence of all of these withdrawals and bank failures, we're seeing the price of credit default swaps go way, way up. Think of CDSs or credit default swaps like life insurance, but for banks. The sicker a bank is perceived to be, the higher the price goes. More specifically, the price to insure against their corporate bonds from failing. And if we look at the credit default swaps of UBS and Deutsche Bank, their prices are going up. This was the exact same thing that happened before Credit Suisse was bailed out. The price of their default swaps went up as well. That's not to say that UBS and Deutsche Bank are next to default, but at least that's why people are comparing those two to Credit Suisse and the banks that fell before. Hopefully, this doesn't spill over to other bigger commercial banks like JP Morgan Chase, and so far, it doesn't look like it will, but keyword, so far. Please stay safe and make sure your bank accounts are protected by the FDIC up to $250,000. And in the meantime, I want you to have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks, links are down below, and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet linked down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon, bye-bye.